What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. In 1998, roller coaster manufacturer Pax Company would unveil a rather unique coaster that seemed to be a pretty good fit for the amusement industry. Being a shuttle design, the coaster had an angled spike at either end of the layout and featured two inversions with a standard two rail track system. However, after problems with this first coaster arose, a new take was drawn up on the design that would not only make it cheaper, but present one of the most innovative concepts ever seen at the time. With the now one inversion and a single rail system, this coaster was installed in a few various locations throughout the world and was extremely bizarre for its time. But what is this coaster? And can we really count it as the first single rail ever? This is the story of Pax Company's Cobra One. In 1988, a small amusement parts ride and manufacturing firm known as PAX in Moscow, Russia, would unveil itself into the amusement industry for the first time. With its first coaster being offered just two years later, in current times they've been responsible for the creation of 37 coasters worldwide, and with that have produced some pretty weird things. Interestingly enough, according to their website, all roller coaster models from them have now been discontinued for unknown reasons, and they no longer offer roller coasters as a product. But that's a topic for another time. What we're really here to talk about is the Cobra 1 model they produced back in the late 90s, which some consider to be the first single rail coaster. And our story starts back in Saudi Arabia, at a theme park known as Cobra Amusement Park. Cobra Amusement Park, part of the larger King Fahad Park, had been filtering flat rides in and out for the last century or so, with many rides becoming part of a ride rotation program similar to that of Six Flags. Fast forward a few decades, and in 1998, enough funding was received that they could finally install a permanent attraction the Cobra. Cobra, a brand new concept made up by PAX Company, was to be a shuttle loop coaster that incorporated two loops and an airtime hill. That being said, the budget for such an attraction was initially pretty low, which was what sparked Cobra Amusement Park's interest in the first place, but after further development began, problems, as in most of my videos, arose. To start, the triangular nature of the track used in development produced a heavy toll cost-wise. The extra support needed for having two loops back to back was something not initially anticipated. This, as well as the extreme complexity of a catch car, something PAX was also unfamiliar with, ultimately brought the cost of the coaster up to over double its intended cost. This was a major problem for PAX, who'd already signed an agreement over cost with Cobra Amusement Park before these problems arose. As a result, PAX was left to cover the extra debt, and so it was assumed we wouldn't be seeing this model appear again due to the expenses. Interestingly enough though, the original one at Cobra Amusement Park had proven extremely well amongst the general public over the course of the next few years, and in 2001, we did see another Cobra 1 arise. PAX saw this as an opportunity to improve upon their previous design, and so some changes were made. This time, each end of the course was vertical, and the two loops had been reduced to one without the introduction of an airtime hill. This made the cost, footprint, and manufacturing process better in all aspects. But perhaps the most important change was within the track itself. Single rail track. PAX figured out that by using this completely custom design, they no longer needed to calibrate distance between the rails, significantly reduced cutting and welding, and ultimately just made the process much more efficient. This resulted in the creation of one other Cobra 1 coaster, which opened at Admiral Vrungel in Russia, and there have been a few recorded cases of them on traveling fair circuit since. But as in all things, this new model wasn't perfect either, and again presented some serious problems. In fact, one so serious, riders were stuck upside down on a vertical loop for hours, something only known as far as I know to have happened on Six Flags' Demon. And we actually have footage of this one too. Unfortunately, given the coaster stopping feature in which a train will roll through the station multiple times before coming to a stop, riders rolled back into the loop after dropping and got suspended on top. Together, riders and a support crane reportedly rocked the train back and forth until it finally dismounted from the top of the loop and rolled into the station. No serious injuries were reported as far as I know. This as well as many other factors ultimately played into the reason more of these things weren't made. And unfortunately, good luck trying to ride one today. With the exception of the original one at Cobra Amusement Park, all single rail versions have since closed and presumed to have been scrapped. Even though, I still love to bring light to these extremely mysterious coasters and hope you all enjoyed today's content. There is one question I'd like to ask you all though before you go. Do we count this as the world's first true single rail or not? I'd probably say yes, though I know of single rails that have existed before it, but who knows, maybe it's up to interpretation, which is why I'd like to hear from you guys down below. Either way though, it's been a huge pleasure creating more content for you guys, and I'd like to invite you to like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's content. Stay tuned for another video coming in a couple days, and as a side note, 
Guys, this weekend, like as in tomorrow, I'm going to be at Nickelodeon Universe and Valley Fair. And then on Sunday, I'm going to be at Six Flags St. Louis for Fright Fest. So, come on in, say hi. I know a ton of you have been commenting in the comments that you guys actually work at the park. That's kind of cool. So, hopefully I'll see some of you there. Either way, though, that's where we're going to be if you want to come meet up and say hi. Don't forget about our Instagram as well. We do keep those daily posts coming, and you can also keep up with us on those story vlogs and get some, some behind-the-scenes stuff onto what videos are going to be coming next. Until then, we'll see you all there. See ya.